So we're going to take a look at one more question type today, and that is the critical, sorry, that is the uh, strengthened question, which as you can imagine is very similar to the weakened question, but the other way around. And uh, what's nice to know in terms of uh, being robotic about this, we are dealing with the same things. We're looking for following if true, um, plus some positive language. We're going to break them down the same way with conclusions, assumptions, and premises. Remember always these three steps. Um, and again, the, and the question we're asking ourselves for strengthened questions is if this was the right, if this was an additional premise, would the argument be better? Okay, let's identify the question as always. Which of the following, if true, um, supports the claim that the horseshoes are evidence? the 17th century Greeks held the horse racing events, long wordy question, um, but we have a strength in question and we know that we're going to look for a conclusion, an assumption, and a premise. Great, so uh, let's go ahead and uh, read this uh, to ourselves and identify the conclusion and the premise. So we have a conclusion that is that the Grecian horse racing events existed earlier than we thought. And why is this the case? Because based on the specific characteristics of these horseshoes, um, the horseshoes, my great picture of a horseshoe, um, were for racing. The horseshoes were for racing, so Grecian horseshoe racing occurred earlier than we had thought. And then which of the following of true, along with these, supports the idea that this is the case. So we want to strengthen this idea. Let's take a look at these answers. The archaeological dig focused solely on the ancient Grecian place near Fable Troy. Solely. Extreme word. Um, if it's true that they focused only there, does that support this statement? It's like it has nothing to do with location. We're talking about when it happened. Um, not where, so that doesn't support the notion that it happened earlier. How about in Persia, horse races are known. Okay, well, we're talking about Grecian horse racing, uh, horse racing, what's the tongue twister, horse racing. Um, so that doesn't count, no Persian horse racing. Uh, the horseshoes were ostentatiously decorated, I don't like it already, suggesting that they live where royal gift, suggesting that they were a royal gift to the Greeks from a neighboring country, um, that doesn't increase the likelihood of them being for racing. Um, D, contemporary horseshoes used for racing are far superior to the unearthed horseshoes in terms of weight and durability. Um, okay, that's great FYI answer choice. Um, I hope E's the answer, or we missed something. Uh, archaeologists also unearth pottery depicting Grecian horse racing, I like it, in the same rock strata and proximity of the horseshoes. If E was another list, that the horseshoes looked like they were for racing and they were also found uh, pottery depicting racing in the same area, that would certainly strengthen that idea. Let's go with E, see if we're right, we're correct, nice. Uh, let's work at one more strengthened question. Uh, which of the following of true, so we see following with true, taken together with the info to the left, best supports the conclusion, so I think we have a strengthened question on our hands. Let's, you know we're going to deal with conclusion, assumption, and premise. Uh, so go ahead and read the paragraph and see if you can break down the conclusion and the premise. So it seems that our conclusion is that um, owners of power plants must get more performance out of them 
Um, because, why? Because insurance premiums have mushroomed um, more money from insurance um, and the mishaps in building and operating um, uh, plants cause a corresponding spike in claims um, so increase in claims seems to have caused the increase in insurance dollars so as a result insurance premiums mushroomed um, and so this has forced owners to um, get more service. So again, the question was, which of the following of true taken with the info to the less supports the conclusion that the cost of nuclear power plants will continue to increase? Oh, looks like the conclusion's over here. So the GMAT's getting a little tricky with us. The conclusion is that the cost of nuclear power plants will in continue to increase. Um, and let's take a look at these answer choices. So insurance premiums for power plants will always be expensive because there are relatively few units over which insurers can spread the risk. If an answer choice is too long for you to think about, just leave it. And don't spend too much time thinking about it. If power plants explode, they are abandoned and the exact reason for the explosion often remains unknown. So if B is true, does it increase the likelihood that the power plants will continue to increase? This is not saying that they will explode, it's just saying if they do. Okay, so that doesn't seem to be helpful. How about C? Power plants will break down more often as greater performance demands are placed on them. Well, we know that the owners are going to put more uh, performance demands on them. Um, and if it's true, if we add C here, um, and that they will break down more if you do, then it seems to support the idea that the costs will continue to increase. So let's leave C. Um, no economy of scale, extreme word, let's see if it makes sense. No economy of scale is possible because power plants are built in tiny numbers. Um, so that doesn't mean that price has to continue to increase just because there's not some economies of scales that could stay the same. Inefficiencies in production are unavoidable because nuclear power plants tend to have major components manufactured by unwieldy joint ventures. So just because there are inefficiencies, we don't know that this means that they will continue to increase. So going back to A, insurance premiums for power plants will always be expensive, but I want to support the idea that they will continue to increase. Um, so I think I can get rid of that guy. Let's pick C um, and see if we are correct. Nice work. Uh, great. So. Um, we saw assumption questions, we saw weaken questions, we saw strengthen questions, um, and let's take a little bit of a moment here to talk a little bit about language and logic on the GMAT. So um, we've seen a lot of answer choices and words like can and could and sometimes and must and never and always and will. Um, and we've also seen, I think, the word some several times and no. Um, these words are really important and we can often uh, guide our understanding of how an accurate an answer choice is by identifying them and making sure they're appropriate. Um, and this is different than thinking about conditional statements and contrapositives um, and logic concepts like transitive properties and Venn diagrams. Um, the GMAT is very heavy on language. We've seen these words and they're important. Um, and we're going to continue to harp on them as we go through the course. Um, often word, answer choices with words like example and counterexample, well there won't be any examples given in the paragraph and then somehow they exist in the answer choices. So I'm always suspicious, sus suspicious of answer choices with words uh, like that. So what we're going to concentrate on is language first and then logic because we want to get through these questions quickly um, and not spend more time thinking about them than, than we need to. Um, so you'll, we'll be coming back to that concept over and over again. So for questions that you get wrong on your practice, it's important to keep a notepad, um, keep a notepad for yourself, um, and in the notepad, not a notepad, and in the notepad, um, uh, for questions you get wrong, you want to answer these questions for yourself in writing, okay? Why is the right answer right? Why did I think it was wrong? Why is the wrong answer wrong? And why did I think it was right? So what these questions are accessing is both the test, right, and your mind. 
And with these two things, um, this is all we got. So we want to understand what's going on with tests. We want to understand what's going on with our mind. And when we ask these questions and write down the answers, we can figure out why we're thinking the way we are and what we're missing. Is it just we didn't understand it or were we understanding it some different way? Um, okay, so if you are a Grokket Standard member, um, this is your homework uh, to complete your first uh, Grokket CAT if you haven't already, so you have a sort of starting score for our practices, and um, uh, also to do 15 assumption questions, 15 strengthen questions, and 15 weaken questions. And uh, when you set these up as custom games in Grokket, they may give you more questions, but you should be keeping track on a notepad as you're practicing. Um, what question you're on. So when you get to question 15, you can stop and come back and do a new uh, version of that assumption custom game at a later time. Um, and I also want you to take one verbal challenge. Um, if you have questions, you can reach us at support at grocket.com um, with questions about homework or anything like that. So cat, your first cat, 15 of these three different question types, um, and your first uh, verbal challenge. So thanks a lot for joining us here. Uh, I'd like to uh, offer a, um, a coupon for folks that have joined us live, and this coupon will be uh, available and running all the way through the end of the weekend. Sunday evening at midnight, we'll be shutting it off, and uh, you can use it twice. Uh, you can use our TV20 coupon here uh, to give yourself, get yourself $20 off our Grocket TV GMAT course that you're um, uh, watching live and free here tonight and will be running live and free um, for each of the 16 sessions. If you want to re-watch the episodes or download them to your iPod or iPad, uh, you can use this coupon to get yourself $20 off that $99 course, uh, video course. Um, and you can also use this coupon to give yourself $20 off a Grocket Standard Admission. Remember, uh, this, ends on, uh, this ends Sunday night. So thank you. Uh, this is just for folks that are joining us here. So thank you all very much for uh, coming out to our first Grocket GMAT course. Um, I've been teaching for many, many years, but this is a new way. We've had a, uh, over 100 people join us in the course, and that is awesome so far. We, uh, we expect to see that number grow over time, and you should all stick around to um, listen to Stacy Blackman. She is the top MBA admissions consultant in the country. We are super excited to have her. Um, she's going to spend a half hour with you eight different times for a total of four hours of MBA admissions uh, consulting uh, instruction. I think you're really going to enjoy that. Uh, thanks a lot, Stacy, and uh, here's over to you. Have a great class.